Bobby Fong made his pro debut aboard a GSXR 600 back in 2007. He gritted against the likes of Josh Hayes, Josh Heron, Roger and Tommy Hayden, and Chaz Davis. Bobby is proof that perseverance pays. He's won Superstock races and put his Superstock bike on the Superbike podium. Now in 2019, it's all coming together again aboard a GSXR 600. He leads the Supersport Championship by 18 points with four rounds to go. Um, so going into turn six. Honestly, you anticipate the bump a little bit, especially a little later on in the race, because you could tuck the front there if you charge a little bit too hard, because your suspension compresses when you hit that bump. So you gotta almost wait for it a little bit, but you gotta, most of the time you gotta hit that thing on the gas so you could drive up the hill. The sooner you get on the gas to wide open throttle, the sooner you could, the faster you get up the hill. But that's definitely one of the trickier corners on this racetrack to getting a good lap time. You've been racing 1000s, 600s, 600s, then 1000s. What's the biggest change that you made when you're riding the 600 versus the bigger bike? Uh, main thing on the 600 is uh, just the corner speed. You know, it's, it's you can't be lazy on the thing. You can't delay the throttle at all, the, the throttle application at all, so, and you got to flow a lot more. On the super bike you could get kind of lazy, you could brake really deep, stop, point it and then shoot. This thing it's you gotta be you gotta be on the limit at all times and at least to get the lap time and get everything you can out of the six hundred so but I enjoy riding it's uh it's a friendly friendly machine to ride. So you're picking up the gas sooner on a six hundred? Cracking the throttle sooner. Cracking the throttle sooner, carrying a lot more middle corner speed you could uh because it doesn't have the power, so you could actually ride it more on the edge of the tire, like a RS125 or something. So you could do that more on the 600s, which is, it, it could bite you. <laughs> it definitely could bite you, which had bit me a few times already, so you definitely gotta be careful of that. But um, yeah, definitely overall middle corner speed a lot higher on the 600s than the 1000s. Around here, they make yellow blocks, kind of at the apex of every corner. Is that where the apex actually is? Yeah, it's Honestly, I don't see the yellow blocks. I've never seen the yellow blocks ever out there. Honestly, I don't know what, what I'm looking at, but I'm not looking at the yellow blocks. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure. Well, now that, that, that could be a new trick, you know, out there. So maybe I could go a little bit faster looking at the blocks. But uh, yeah, I haven't looked at the blocks out there, but um, you got to definitely make sure you hit all your lines. Do you have a braking marker specifically for every turn? I do, but I don't know where it is. I have a braking marker in every turn, but I have no idea what it is. Uh, it's a, I'm using something as a reference or something. I'm more of a feel rider. I have something I'm using. I just can't exactly point it out. It could be a crack in the ground, or it could be, you know, if it's really visible, the one, two, three, four marker or something, but it's different in every corner, and I can't really say, hey, I'm breaking at this point. What's the biggest change in your riding since the uh, safety first days when you were 16 years old? Uh, just calmness, patience, patience. It came with age. <laughs> it came with age. Mainly, I'm not I'm not riding harder at all. If anything, I backed it off a little bit. Um, just hitting my marks, being smart, using my brains instead of riding harder to get the lap time. You just kind of got to back it down a little bit to get the lap time. So, experience. I'll make you